So you've found a new skin lesion and you aren't sure what to do next. Don't worry, by the end of this video, you'll have a clear plan of action. Hi, I'm Dr. Finbar, a GP specialising in dermatology. And over the past 10 years, I've assessed tens of thousands of skin lesions. I've come up with the five step safe skin system, which provides a comprehensive approach to maintaining skin health and ensuring early detection of potential issues. If you've ever wondered what that spot is on your arm, if it's just a freckle or something more, by the end of the video, you'll know what to look for. Now, before we begin, please remember that this video is for educational purposes only. It's not a substitute for professional medical advice. Ideally, we would all have regular access to dermatology experts, but I understand that that's not always feasible. The safe skin system is designed to empower you with the knowledge to help recognize potential skin lesions early, but always consult a healthcare provider if you have concerns. When I mention skin lesion, I'm referring to any part of your skin that looks or behaves differently from the surrounding area. Safe skin steps. Screen, amend, assess, familiarize, educate, and evaluate. Let's go through them now. So step one, evaluate your risk. Begin by understanding the risk factors that increase your risk of skin cancer. So knowing your family history, your personal history of skin cancer, your age, your sun exposure, including any use of tanning beds or outdoor work, the skin type you have and your immune system health. Consider how much time you spend outdoors if you've experienced sunburns as this significantly increases your risk of melanoma. And if you're immunosuppressed, particularly due to medication or illness, your risk of certain skin cancer such as SCC, squamous cell carcinoma, is elevated. Knowing your risks helps you determine how vigilant you need to be in monitoring your skin. Now that you've thought about your risk profile, let's talk about what you can do to reduce it. Step two is amending modifiable risk factors. Once you've identified your risk profile, focus on adjusting these factors within your control to lower your risk. Now, this will include things like UV protection, using sunscreen daily, wearing protective clothing and avoiding peak sun exposure. Be mindful of sunburn risks, especially during childhood and teenage years, although you can do nothing about them afterwards, but just being aware of them and reducing further damage. Incorporating a balanced diet rich in antioxidants getting regular exercise, plenty of high quality of sleep, all support your overall skin health and immune function. And stay away from tanning or sunbeds because they just increase your risk of UV exposure and increase your risk of skin cancer exponentially. Step three then is assessing and familiarizing yourself with your own skin, getting to know your normal skin. So you should do regular examinations of your entire body. Depending on your risk earlier, for some people that may mean doing a monthly check, for others maybe every two to three months or once a quarter is enough. Knowing your moles, knowing your freckles, pay attention to any existing spots, notice their size, shape and color, and have an idea of where they are. So if you have a lot of sun damage in the past, a lot of uh, outdoor work, do this monthly to assess your risk. You might need to use mirrors or get a friend or a partner to help you with areas in your back or difficult to see places. Keep a record of any existing moles or freckles or lesions that you currently have. It's important to recognize that if you're under 18, most new skin lesions are likely harmless as the skin's still developing and the benign lesions like moles or freckles are still very common and they appear every year. Similarly, if a lesion has been present for a long time and without any noticeable changes, it's generally less concerning. Identifying patterns such as spots that resemble others in size, shape and colour is also reassuring. New spots that fit the same patterns are usually benign, but if something is breaks that pattern and is different, it's asymmetrical in shape with an uneven colour and irregular borders that needs more close attention. If you're getting new lesions in adulthood, apply more scrutiny to these. While new moles are uncommon after the age of 30, benign lesions like seborrheic keratosis or sunspots become more frequent as you age. Regularly checking your skin are the key to early detection and you'll note any significant difference in a lesion over that time. Be aware of persistent or scabbing lesions that don't heal properly as this can be a warning sign for BCC or basal cell carcinoma. These often heal and then 
return and scab again. Now you've got your risk profile, you've done your skin check, it's time for step four, to educate yourself on the various skin lesions so that you know what you're looking for. It's crucial to understand the difference between common, benign and malignant skin lesions. Educating yourself on the characteristics of these benign things uh, such as their long-standing stability, they don't change over time, they're symmetrical, and familiarize yourself with the warning signs like the A, B, C, D, E's. A for asymmetry, B for irregular border, uh, C for more than two colors, D for diameter greater than six millimeters or different from the other lesions, and E for evolving. And also note the E, F, and G, elevated, firm, and growing lesions. These are extra warnings. Any sudden changes in size, shape and colour should prompt closer attention, although rapid changes are more often associated with trauma rather than skin cancer because it normally takes weeks or months to evolve. Be particularly cautious of lesions that stand out as different from the others, often referred to as the ugly duckling sign. This can be significant. Finally, step five, evaluate any concerns with a professional. This final step is crucial. Remember, early detection can make all the difference. So don't hesitate. If you feel something isn't right, such as a new lesion, changes to an existing one, or anything feels different, don't hesitate to consult your health care provider. If you have a high number of moles, especially if they vary in shape and size, regular professional evaluations are essential as the likelihood of melanoma increases with the number of these atypical moles. And your health care professional will use a dermatoscope to further evaluate them. Remember that individuals with a history of significant sun exposure or those who have experienced blistering sunburns between the ages of 15 and 20 have a higher risk for melanoma. If something doesn't feel right, trust your instincts. Patient concern is always a valid reason to seek professional advice. Early professional evaluation is crucial for accurate diagnosis, timely treatment and peace of mind. You've now got the tools to take control of your skin health with the Safe Skin System. Are you ready to dive deeper? Watch this next video where I'll walk you through the key differences between an innocent and a benign or a malignant skin lesion. Because when it comes to your skin health, knowledge is your best line of defense. And on my channel, I have lots of videos describing benign and malignant lesions. See you in the next one.